It is such an honor to get to speak to you again uh, for the second time for me. I said this last year, I want to echo it again. This isn't the only chamber that I'm active in because I have another one in my district. Um, the leaders that Northwest Oklahoma City, and I'm excluding myself, the leaders that Northwest Oklahoma City sends to the state capitol is quite impressive. Every member of the House, except for myself, is a chairman that's sitting up here as the chairman of the committee, or we have the vice chair of our caucus here. Um, I, I just want to brag on that for a second. Also pointing out it's kind of humbling as me to have to follow them. Maybe that, that's part of it, so, so don't set your expectations quite so high. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what we did last year and um, what I did and what we'll be looking forward to going through in the future. Um, in my area, I have the area that was hit by the tornadoes, uh, not, not the more tornadoes, the one that came through on the 31st. As a matter of fact, it hit my house. Uh, as we went through. There was a story in the business section about this legislation. It, it kind of crept under the radar. Um, I carry what I think is probably the best piece of taxpayer property tax protection uh, since we passed the constitutional cap. Um, under this new piece of legislation, if your home is damaged in some type of disaster through no fault of your own, and you make you make you make uh, improvements. You you redress the situation without adding additional square footage. Your property taxes are not going to go up. That's a huge deal to thousands and thousands and thousands of homeowners just this year, and that affects statewide. I, I was grateful that Daily Oklahoma did an article about it. it. It didn't really get a lot of press because we didn't do it for the press. Um, and we didn't really come up with the concept as to how to do it. You know, when I first came to staff for, for that idea, they said it can't be done. Um, uh, being a lawyer and having a, a legal background, I kind of have a different philosophy. If, we're, if it's constitutional, we need to find a way to do it. It's good policy. And that's what we were able to do. Uh, I was actually also able to work, uh, and, and as many of you know, I'm very, uh, very involved in construction issues, have been since my time in the legislature. Um, on the House side, uh, I was able to work on the bond that passed. So I want to talk a little bit about that capital bond, the one that actually did pass. Um, the House voted down a $160 million bond uh, for the capital, and I voted no one when it first came through. It wasn't because I didn't think we need to fix the capital. We have a duty, and I agree with Senator Tree wholeheartedly, and by the way, he's one of the leaders in this, but for Senator Tree, it would not have gotten done. Um, we have a duty to fix that capital. The capital was embarrassing. I mean, not, not falling into decay. I could take you to sections where you could literally take sewage pipe and lift it up in the basement of the capital. Guys, this is your building. This isn't mine. At, at best, I am a steward for a short amount of time of the people's building. And for years, that was apparently not the attitude because we were doing a very poor job with our stewardship. So let's talk about the bond that we actually did pass because I know there's those, those that are against bonds, but I really want the, the people to understand. We passed a $120 million bond with a 10-year amortization schedule. This is a conservative a position as you can take to bond fix the capital. In addition to that, thanks to leadership like Senator Treat and some of the other leaders that did this, we have an oversight committee of both House and Senate members that is bipartisan, <coughs> not just Republicans. Two Republicans, one Democrat, makes up essentially the registration that we have in both houses in the House and the Senate that's going to be overseeing that commit, that's going to be overseeing that construction. And I believe that in the long run, this will save the state of Oklahoma money. Now, I'm just curious. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet nobody in here lives in a 100-year-old home. But there was a time that I lived in a 40-year-old home. If I would have done no serious maintenance for 40 years, would that home be in very good shape? Of course not. And we hadn't done any serious maintenance, serious integral maintenance. Uh, hey, the first thing I'm looking forward to is the next time the Thunder make the playoffs, we're not going to have barricades in the front of the Capitol. It's going to be neat. Um, so, 
So, so we're, ve we're very pleased with that. As many of you know, uh, I was also involved in the Governor's Storm Shelter proposal. Um, I think that was a great proposal that had a lot of merit. Um, but while it won, while it, won uh, uh, it won the day in the House, it died in the Senate. I also want to point out, we were talking at our table earlier, as a Republican, you run for office, and one of your beliefs is oftentimes government is not the answer. Um, and frankly, that's my baseline. My baseline is that it's not the job of government, and then you have to prove me that it is. Uh, we have, through a private foundation that I've started with uh, Representative Martin McBride and Representative Eric Proctor and Representative Richard Morissette, two Democrats who started uh, with me, raised over $2.2 million uh, for Shelter Oklahoma Schools and we have actually put in over 10 storm shelters through private funding. Um, there's a whole lot of people that were talking about it. There was one organization that was doing it, and we got it done. And we're very proud of what we were able to do. I say all that to say it's not necessarily a legislative update because the legislature didn't do it, but as many of us up here in the state of Oklahoma, we're citizen legislators. We're up there for a short period of time, and then we go back and we work our regular jobs, and we take care of our family, and we do our best to use that position of influence um, to, uh, to do some good. And, and I think that was an area where we were able to do it. I think in, um, I would also echo, if I, if I had any disappointments uh, in the session, because uh, there's a few other things, the, one of the biggest things we did, I'm, I'm not saying, because the architect's right beside me, I'm so proud of what we've done there, uh, but if I had any disappointment, I would say last session, the House specifically did not do as good a job as it could have as keeping the public informed of where we were going. I think that was because as uh, Senator Tree talked about such a stressful time, and as Representative Kern talked about, we had a change in leadership in the very beginning of the session, which is abnormal. <laughs> And Speaker Hickman did a wonderful job. I mean, did a great job, very proud to serve under Speaker Hickman. But I think I'm looking forward to next year with some continuity um, from the beginning. We're doing some of those. And I think we could do a better job. Uh, and I'm going to close in this because this is one of my um, big issues that I'll be working on next year. I read, I've read nonstop in the paper, and I really do feel like it's been nonstop. One person after another wanting extremely large sums of money, whether it's, and I'm not even going to go through them because I don't, I don't think I need to, but I think you've read them too. You know, the state budget didn't give enough here. The state budget didn't get enough here. The state budget didn't give enough here. I want to make sure we have a firm understanding as a citizenry, and, and really I'd like to raise the level and then I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I'm still going to do this because I have the money. Um, I'd like to raise the level of what we're talking about with the budget, and here's what I want you to remind. I'm going to be working on this next year. When somebody wants more government money, and they don't tell you who they're going to take it from, be it you or from some other governmental source, they're pandering to you. And I want to make sure we do a much better job of understanding we have a balanced budget and finite resources, and we're up there to make hard decisions. Thank you.